which is a great segue into today's starting video. We're going to be going and doing more of the Expedition Liquidators this morning. But I did want to talk with everybody uh, about my overall... I, I had a theme, a topic in mind for this morning before we get going to the stream to just set the tone for the day. Because I know this morning's video on the Expedition... I, you know, I had some things I poked at, things I don't like about it, but, you know, overall we're having fun. I'm having much more fun in the base game than with the Expeditions, but that led me to one of the things I wanted to talk about, which is how I know it didn't release this year, but for me, No Man's Sky is easily, so far, my game of the year for 2024. And I know that it doesn't count, because it's not a 2024 release. Um, it's an eight-year-old game, but... I'm having more fun in this game than anything else I've played this year. Now, Star Wars Outlaws is my most anticipated title, and I have no doubt that once I dive into Star Wars Outlaws, the throne will be taken over, because I, I just love Star Wars. And that's like Red Dead Redemption 2 in space, and I'm just like, yep, sold. So I have no doubt when we get to that point, you know. And there's other things, Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, Indiana Jones, The Great Circle, uh, Stalker 2, Space Marine 2. There's a lot of games, Dragon Age, The Veil Guard. A lot of things I'll be playing this year that will be vying for that top spot eventually. But for now, No Man's Sky is my game of the year for 2024. And I want to talk about why. We're going to do a little bit of a chat here this morning before I get going into the expedition. And by the way, this is the perfect promo for those of you who haven't followed along yet. Daily streams here and on Twitch, YouTube and Twitch. 11 a.m. Central Time, multi-stream every day. And if you're here live for these... It's more fun that way. You get to have your chat read off occasionally. I, for one of the, for the thing that happened with just the beginning, Inside Vortex saying, No Man's Sky has the best community I've seen from any of the game. That's been one of the largest reasons why this has been such a fun experience for me. Is And I already did a video about this the other day, about the community aspect of the game. There have been a couple of bad apples, like there are with any game. But overall, the community has been very, you know, helpful overwhelmingly helpful in some cases some people like will bombard me with like 50 60 things over the course of like three days and there's no way i can possibly keep up to track of that the game as it exists in 2024 with the world's update part one i know world's update part two is coming and there's some other stuff that's coming in the pipeline as well what got me interested was world's update part one I went, oh, those visuals look really cool. Oh, they're bringing tech in from their other game. Oh, that's amazing. But also, the sheer amount of things to do in this game, which I realized did not exist when the game came out. The game, when it launched, was in a very different state. I've heard that this had one of the worst launches in, like, the last 10 years. Um, up there with, like, Final Fantasy XIV just having a completely horrible, horrible launch. But then they turned it around... And we're able to get that trust back from the community. And over the last eight years, um, they've done, I think, 27 updates to the game for free. No paid DLC, just 100% for free. And I've covered some of this in other videos I've been working on over the past couple of weeks. Like, I think I did one yesterday talking about all the things you can do as a new player in No Man's Sky. So... There's obviously the RPG component, because there are quests in the game that you can run. And I'm talking about the way the game exists now, not the way it existed when it launched. I'm talking about now, in 2024, why I think it's game of the year for me, even though it's not a new release. There's quests and storylines. So from an RPG perspective, I'm getting that part of my love of gaming fulfilled. I like RPGs. I like storyline. There is the exploration component which i get satisfied in lots of different games that i play um, i love starfield i love exploring space and going to planets and all the space stations and everything else but what this game offers that that game doesn't is like the ability to f land on planets and take off from planets now i don't want to do that every time i love fast travel sometimes but sometimes i do want the option to fly down and come back and so it's nice to have that, and, I, and it's not the same art style, it's completely different. I, I, I don't like to do the direct comparisons too much because what No Man's Sky does well, they do well. What Starfield does well, they do well. They don't necessarily fit the same genre, and that's okay. There are places where they bridge the gap, 
where it's like they both have elements of space sim, space exploration. Starfield weight does way more. Their gun gunplay is way better in my mind. And I like the ship combat there a lot more than I like the ship combat here. Um, and I love cinematic storytelling way more than I do the way the storytelling is displayed here in No Man's Sky. But they have good storytelling. That's great. They have the exploration. They have a different type of ship building, but they have ship collections as well. So I can go out there and collect all the ships that I want. There's the freighters and getting all the freighters that, that you want, like getting the right freighter for you and then decking that freighter out and having that be on mobile base. There's the base building aspect, which has consumed a great portion of my early gameplay was building that perfect first base. And we, we have that base building episode series, which is on pause right at the moment because we are doing the expedition this week, but we'll be getting back to that soon. I got that Viper looking ship that I wanted to go along with my Battlestar Galactic looking frigate slash freighter that I'm going to go deep into in terms of fleshing that out to be a fighter vessel. Um, there, I, I didn't even know this until yesterday doing the expedition. There's food crafting. There's like this idea of going and find prey, like uh, big giant animals. And I had seen some of the animals on the planets before. Um, but, um, you know, there's, there's, the expedition is showing me all the other stuff that I hadn't seen. The expedition's a little overwhelming. I, that video went out earlier this morning. It doesn't take away from the fact that I'm, I still think this is my game of the year so far. And for all of these reasons, uh, seriously says at least half of the updates are full on expansions like other games do. Inside Vortex says the first six months were extremely rough. No story at all, only exploration and extremely limited inventory. Gunboat Willie says two different games play-wise, Starfield and No Man's Sky. Yep. Uh, Henrik Scape Dev need to set priorities for the release game. You can't have it all in seven years. Um, it's definitely you have to learn how to... Well, it's not even developers. Hang on, I gotta, I gotta jump back to what Hater just said. Hater X said games dev need to set priorities before they release the game. No. In, in many cases, it's also gamers need to set priorities and stop expecting every game to be, you know, they look at, here's a good example. Starfield launched, and I had way, so many people looking at Starfield saying, but No Man's Sky did this, 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 and this better than Starfield. That is an unfair comparison to make when Starfield has been out for seven years at the time of Starfield's publication. You can't publish a seven- you know, you can't really fairly compare a game that's been out for seven years with seven years of updates compared to a game that just launched. That's, you can't do that. That's absolutely a biased approach. That's, that's a big no-no in journalism. Um, you can't do that. So it's also on the gamers. G game devs need to learn how to scale back and not try to throw everything at the wall, but also gamers need to be a little more understanding of what goes into making these things and understand that some things take time. You can't have anything, everything at launch. Um, Ripner says, I have not gone far to No Man's Sky yet, just getting into base building, but I get the feeling this game is focused on exploration, whereas Starfield is focused more on story and combat. Well, Starfield has an exploration component, but I'll be the first to admit that I didn't want to run the round the 1,000 planets on foot. The land vehicles that are coming, I believe, this month in the free update are going to change that for a lot of people. And, and you will now want to go explore those planets because you're going to have that that land vehicle to roam around in. You still can't fly around in the atmosphere, and that's fine. They do it completely differently there, but the land vehicle will, will change that aspect of the game. Because they do want people to go out and explore those thousand planets. But they've done that in a way because what they want is they want a thousand planets to expand on over time. So in six months we do an expansion over here on these three planets, and over here we can do expansions on these three planets, and then players can come in the creator and creative engine and you know put things over here on these planets. Um, Pippin, do not scratch my chair. Um, Jacob says it launched. No Man's Sky was limited, but there's still stuff to do. You could just learn the core mechanics. Farfuffle says you can actually collect parts and then build your own design ship. Yeah, that's another part of the game. Um, anyway, let me get back to my, I'll answer more comments in a bit. I'm getting sidetracked. There are lots of things to do in No Man's Sky. More than I thought. I thought when I was jumping in that it was just going to be, uh, planet exploration, space exploration, and base building. And then I found out there was a story, and then I found out that there was combat, and you can, like, take your multi-tool and, like, 
have a shotgun or a machine gun or, you know, a sniper rifle. And then I found out that you can have all these different types of ships and there's different types of ships. There's haulers and, and freighters and, 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 and fighters and uh, explorers and they all fly differently and then you could make them do different things based on what mods you're putting in and there's different tiers of ships. Then there's um, underwater bases, land bases, orbital bases on top of the ships that you can get. Um, and then I found out about the expeditions, and then I found out, okay, so then there's the underwater submarine that you get, and there's, like, a speeder bike, and then there's, like, a giant colossus, and there's a nomad, there's, like, all these different vehicles you can get. The amount of content on a per, like, I'm playing this through Game Pass, so I, I'm not going out and buying a copy. I have Game Pass Ultimate, um, so that's how I was able to play No Man's Sky. I didn't go out, and, out of my way to buy it, but I do have it through my subscription. Um, I would happily pay money for this game. Like, for the money that you would spend, regardless of whether you pay 25 bucks for it or 50 bucks for it or $70 for it, there is a shit, a metric shit ton of things to do in this game. Like, I'm barely, if you count the expedition, I'm over 50 hours now. But I, I have seen way more people in the comments on my videos for this game who have logged thousands of hours than I have seen for any other game I've played outside of an MMORPG. When you start talking about 15-year-old MMOs like EverQuest 1, 2, World of Warcraft, Lord of the Rings Online, Star Wars Republic, yeah, you're going you're gonna to find people who have thousands of hours gameplay because it's been out for a while, and I found that here, which I wasn't anticipating. Um, so for the sheer amount of money for your value, or value for your money, if I can remember how to say that properly, No Man's Sky provides more than any other game I've seen in 2024 so far, and it's fun. I don't, there are things I don't like. Like, I hate the fact that there's no aim assist for ground combat because I suck at shooting. Does that take away from my fun factor in the game? A little bit, but not enough for me to, you know, quit over it. Um, other games do space combat better. This is kind of fun, you know. The space exploration part is fun. Jumping to other systems is cool. Um, flying around on the surface of planets is a lot of fun, and I will readily admit that I really wish and hope and it would be cool if Bethesda one day could do that for Starfield, because holy shit. And having just went and tried out Star Citizen the other day for the first time in years, they're finally getting that game to the point where it feels very satisfactory to fly around and go into Atmo and come back down and fly around on the surface and lots of cool stuff here. Um, so I'm having a great time. The community has made a part of that great time. There's a ton of stuff to do. No Man's Sky is easily my game of the year 2024, so far. I expect Star Wars Outlaws will knock it off the perch. But that's just because I'm a Star Wars fan since I was a little baby. Um, but I gotta say, guys, for those of you who've been playing this game for eight years and love this game, I'm barely tapping the surface here, and I get it. I get it. Daily streams, 11 a.m. Central Time, here. And on Twitch. We're multi-streaming right now, but I'm going to pull this out as a sub video for YouTube. So, for those of you who watch the episode format, you know what to do.